Hi there, welcome to this Raw News special and today we're interviewing Luke Mepham, the new uh, president of Warwick Students Union. Luke joins me now. Uh, Luke, so you won this election in, uh, in term two of last year and so yeah, much has changed you. since then, hasn't it? Um, how are you? I'm all right, thank you. Just enjoying the sunshine, um, keeping everything ticking over and working hard to get everything ready for uh, the beginning of the next year. Fantastic. Yeah. And yeah, it's, yeah. it's not far away now, is it? Um, what's it been like? Because you've been society's officer up until this week when you've become the, the president of the SU. Uh, what's it been like doing it all during the pandemic? I mean, it's been very strange. Obviously, we've had uh, a very weird end to the year, um, kind of not having our last term of our term in office in the office. That was a horrible sentence. Um, but uh, yeah, it was, it was very, very strange kind of finishing, finishing on a Friday with one team. Um, coming in on the Monday with a completely new team and having to kind of get them all trained up and ready to ready to hit the ground running all online. Um, so we've been trying our best to kind of gel as a team and everything, and it is going really, really well and everyone's working really hard, but it has just been a very strange experience. Um, but I'm very excited to see uh, kind of what the next year has in store. Um, there's lots and lots of great campaigns and projects going on uh, and also loads of opportunity to kind of um, really shape the student experience and make sure that Warwick can still serve its students um, as it should be, even through these difficult times. And what's it been like for you personally, that shift from society's officer, which as we know is an important role in the issue, but then becoming the boss, becoming the president, what's that been like? It's It's been, i say the, the weirdest thing is I've kind of, once the university caught on to the fact that um, you're already working there and that you're the incoming president, they they do start to like chuck meetings in your diary and the like. So the last month has, to be honest, been doing a lot of work of both the president and the society's officer. Um, so it's been pretty full on. Um, now it's just strange, like handing over the, the reins of societies to Ollie. Um, so trying to make sure that kind of he can crack on with the role um, and that I'm not stepping on his feet or winding him up too much. Um, but he seems to be enjoying it and he's going to do a cracking job. But yeah, it's it's a very, very strange kind of just doing the job on the Friday and on the Monday someone else is doing your job. It, it is weird. but. We're enjoying it and all getting on very well. Yeah, and of course you're all elected um, on that night in the Dirty Duck in Term 2 and you, you're all, you know, there sat on the sofa together. But have you been able to see each other, you know, all in person since? I suppose you haven't, have you? We've we've seen each other briefly, um, kind of going in and out of the SU with uh, to get photos and the like. Um, but obviously having to space it all out and socially distance it. So it has been um, kind of like one in, one out at times. But... We've been seeing each other on lots and lots of Teams calls, um, keeping up to date. But uh, come September, hopefully we'll be back in the office um, and we'll be able to see each other as a team. Uh, but yeah, it has been weird. Um, you don't quite get that same interaction over over a Teams or Zoom call as you do in person. But, but we're getting there. Yeah, exactly. Well, I'm glad you mentioned looking forward to September because um, there's a lot of people very worried about how this next academic year is going to go. There's international students who are unsure if they're even going to be allowed to come to the UK, mm -hmm. um, let alone study when they're here. Um, what are you doing as an SU? Are you going to be back in the office f from the start of term one? Yeah, so we're, we're hoping that um, the SABs and kind of the student facing uh, staff within the SU will be back. Um, obviously there will also be some people working from home and it's looking like university staff can be working from home on the whole. Um, we're just doing a lot of work with the university at the moment to make sure that when students return to campus or indeed don't return to campus, um, that they're still again, essentially getting the student experience that they deserve. So um, that includes making sure that students can get to campus um, if they're living in Leamington or Canley um, or further out. Um, and also uh, making sure that students have the option that if they don't want to come to campus for their um, contact hours, they can do it remotely still. Um, we understand that a lot of students will still be shielding. Um, and also we're doing quite a lot of work to make sure that those international students that are quarantining um, can still access their education, uh, but also social events and uh, kind of things to support their well-being and welfare whilst they're quarantining. So um, I'm not exactly sure what it will look like in terms of whether you'll be able to go uh, where you'll be isolating just in your kitchen um, or in your block. Um, I still don't actually know what the university has planned for that. Um, however, we are encouraging societies to organise events in those few weeks in the run-up to Welcome Week. Uh, we understand the university is allowing international students uh, to move in a few weeks early um, so that they can kind of do that quarantine period and then still enjoy Welcome Week um, along with all of the home students. Uh, so that's, that's a positive move. 
Um, and I'm keen, uh, essentially, to keep developing a programme of events to make sure that international students at quarantining are supported. Um, and I think the university are doing the same as well. There's so much to unpick, really. I mean, you mentioned that journey in. The buses are so busy anyway. And if you're going to have to you know, be a metre plus, which is on a bus effectively two metres away from somebody else, how on earth are they going to do that? They're going to have to have uh, so many more buses. Have you been in any, to- in any talks with, with, with the bus companies? Um, so I've been, in, I've been in quite a lot of talks with the university's director of transport, um, and he's doing some very good work with the bus companies, actually. Um, so obviously, normally you end up with kind of peaks at the beginning and end of the day. Um, so the aim is to try and kind of flatten those peaks, um, just as with uh, Boris's coronavirus response. I suppose, but I'm um, trying to flatten those peaks um, and kind of make it so that there's demand for the buses throughout the day. Um, and that way they believe there will be the necessary bus capacity. Um, there's been other things that they've been looking at in terms of uh, getting all lectures kind of uh, in one day um, so that you don't have to keep coming onto campus several days. Um, but then the university are kind of also aware of the fact that students will want to come onto campus to access study space, will want to come onto campus to use the gym and for social events. Um, so there is still a lot of planning. Um, nothing is kind of bang on in terms of timetabling, uh, but the work is going on and I'm confident that transport won't be any, probably any more of a mess than usual, I think is probably the diplomatic way of saying it. Okay, and I know you're not society's officer anymore, but you'll still be involved in the process of, of um, you know, society's organising events. Mm-hmm. And I'm thinking of things like Circle, where there's, you know, 100 people all sat there yeah. and then and going to Bob and, and, you know, holding all these events and academic events too. Um, how, how are societies being encouraged to, to do their events at a social distance? So um, we ran a couple of sessions, actually, um, while I was still a society officer, myself and Charlotte, the sports officer, uh, ran a few sessions with exec members, basically to brainstorm um, online events and also so- socially distant events that can go on through Welcome Week um, and to try and introduce new students to their activities. So we're encouraging societies to run both online and, in- and in-person events, essentially so they can try and have some return to normality um, with in-person events, but also not leaving out those students that are shielding or are quarantining or just don't feel comfortable going to a larger event. Um, So we're not exactly sure what that will look like yet. It does depend on government and the university guidance. Um, However, currently the university is working on two meter social distancing uh, throughout. And also it's looking like uh, there will be kind of restrictions on the number of people that can be at an event um, in line with the government guidance. So it's hard to put a exact kind of specification on what it's going to look like. Uh, it really, really does just depend on what the national scene is at the time. OK, and, and you mentioned sh- shielded students a few times. I know there is a worry. Those that have been shielding up till now may be asked to, to shield again. And, and then how on earth can a student get themselves involved in the university experience um, if they're shielding? You know, think of a, a first year student coming. That, of course, be that process of moving from one house to the student accommodation. And you mm-hmm. probably come into contact with other people then. And then if you're in some, some flats, how, how would you go from your room to the kitchen? Would you be able to socialise with those you live with? It's a very concerning time for those uh, with health conditions, which means they have to shield. Absolutely. I, it is is a very very difficult time especially in some of the uh, accommodation blocks where a, a, a flat is kind of completely open such as roots um, and that is something that we've raised with the university and they are doing work um, on essentially trying to make sure that students feel safe within their flats um, I'm not sure exactly again what that's going to look like um, but I'm confident the work is going on um, I think perhaps the university could be a little bit more timely in its communications regarding that because I know there is quite a lot of worry um, amongst those uh, at risk and vulnerable students so um, we're going to keep pushing the university essentially to get that communications out and to do that work a bit faster. Um, but I am confident that it will it will all be OK um, in terms of students uh, kind of there will there will be measures in place within accommodations to make sure that students that are at risk um, are safe. We just need to get that out to students and also the university needs to work out exactly what that's going to look like. Now, I've heard indications from some universities that the exams um, period in, in the third term would be remote in the same way it was, you know, in the, in the last term for us. Um, I know that's looking quite far ahead. But have you got any indication of how that might be? None at all. I haven't, I haven't heard anything um, regarding that. I think a lot of the planning at the moment is going into term one um, and then the university are very much kind of seeing how term one goes, seeing what the national picture is after that um, and haven't really made any decisions beyond that. Um, I think we're confident, though, that if 
uh, if kind of term one runs smoothly, that will then be able to continue into term two. Um, however, we could also then just flip back to more in-person teaching. Really, really depends on what the national picture is looking like at the time, to be honest. Yeah, and of course, international as well with students coming from all over the world. Um, Welcome Week, we both know, Luke, is so important to to not just socialise with those you're going to live with, but meet people from your course, meet people that you'll probably be friends with for the rest of your university experience. And so much of this is done in person, if not all of it, really. Um, Looking forward to Welcome Week this year, it's going to be quite a different experience. Absolutely. It is is going to be strange. Um, So this year, the university are organising a digital first welcome week, um, which essentially means that there will still be in-person activities. Um, However, everything will be ready to be flipped online if necessary. um, And also everything will be fully accessible online for those that are quarantining, shielding, um, or just don't feel comfortable going out. Um, So, for example, our sports and society fair will be completely online. Um, that's going to be slightly fancier than just uh, scrolling down the web pages. There will still be interactivity with the exec members, so trying to give it that that fair feel that we have uh, with the normal in-person event. Um, but also, we are encouraging societies to run um, societies and clubs to run events in person, uh, so that students that are on campus and want to get out and socialise can do so. Um, also, we're very very conscious of the fact that students uh, are losing some of those key opportunities to make friends that normally would happen within the first uh, few weeks of university. So. One of the things we're doing to sort that is to operate a buddy scheme so that students can be matched up with other students with similar interests um, or students in other year groups in a kind of mentor-mentee fashion. So that is completely optional. If students don't want to engage with that, they don't have to. But it is there for those students that perhaps uh, kind of want to have a conversation, uh, meet up with someone virtually or otherwise. Uh, But I'm confident there will still be events offering. Obviously, it won't be um, the same welcome week we're all used to. We won't all be going to the copper rooms every night. Um, however, our commercial team are putting on um, other online events uh, in somewhat in a replacement and also hoping that we can get some of the SU commercial outlets open so that you can still go for um, kind of go for a meal, go for a drink in the evening with your newfound friends. And wouldn't it be lovely if that Eat Out to Help Out scheme was extended so we could have it all half price? That'd be brilliant. Um, now, there are a lot of young people, and I think it's fair to say this, that aren't necessarily respecting social distancing Um, you know, to the letter. There's a lot of concern that there's people at the moment breaking the rules and, you know, could lead to to rise of infections. And this could well happen on campus with a lot of young people thinking, well, we're less likely to to get to die from the virus, although you could still get it. Um, We're going to pass it on to other young people. That's not really a worry. Um, Is there a possibility that they could say, right, young people at university, you can just mix as, as normal? Or is that really, really out of the question? And, and how, is, how is social distan- distancing going to be enforced on campus? So um, I think with the, with the former issue of uh, kind of allowing university students to mix, I think, honestly, regardless of the government guidance, um, throughout term one at least, uh, Warwick will continue to um, uphold two metre social distancing. Uh, the, the university is so wary of the fact that another a second wave um, and another lockdown, even a local lockdown, um, would just have massive implications on the student experience as a whole. And so are very, very keen to avoid that to the, to the point where we are setting up a uh, test and trace uh, system on campus, essentially, so that um, coronavirus tests can happen on campus and be returned to students quickly. Um, so the university are following scientific advice um, over government advice, I would say, uh, which is which is good to hear. Good to hear. Um, but yeah, no, I think it's uh, perhaps... The university, some would say, are being a little bit um, on the safer side, which I absolutely agree with and think that is kind of the way forward. Um, in terms of the enforcement, uh, I think kind of pushing a uh, an ethos of collective responsibility seems to be the university's line on it. Um, so I imagine they're probably, if students are blatantly flouting the rules, blatantly kind of um, not obeying social distancing, um, I imagine the university would impose sanctions or take students down the regular disciplinary route however i think on the whole they're trying to avoid avoid that um and go for a more educational um collective responsibility uh message which i think is incredibly positive um and i know there are going to be staff um on the ground kind of out managing queues or any bottlenecks that appear um which is really really good to hear rather than kind of going for the direct investment in um enforcement of the rules which seems to be happening at other universities Okay, and maybe we'll be seeing you walking around the Warwick SU face mask on. I'm sure some of them are being ordered. Um, 
Luke, just a sort of final reflection. You've got an enormous challenge ahead of you this year. Um, the job of an SU president is difficult anyway, but in these really unusual circumstances, it is going to be a tough year ahead. And it sounds like, you know, the wheels are in motion to make it as safe as possible. Um, I suppose your vision for the year ahead has changed a little bit uh, since you were elected. I think so. I think it's important that whilst we work with the university to um, make sure the students are kind of getting the best student experience throughout this year, that we do still push ahead with some of our manifesto pledges. And I'm confident that uh, myself and the team are doing that, um, kind of looking at different different changes we can make throughout this time. And it is a very, very good time to be implementing that change. So some of my priorities are kind of embedding sustainability throughout the curriculum, um, working to reduce course costs. And I think they all tie in really, really well with the situation that we have at the moment. Um, especially kind of reducing course costs, knowing the financial impact um, of coronavirus on all students and indeed the whole population. So um, I think my focus on this year is basically to make sure that students still get that, that student experience that they signed up to um, and that the university are making sure students are safe and supported throughout their time. Um, but also pressing ahead with our manifestos um, is still a priority. OK, Luke, thanks ever so much for talking to us today. And I look forward to seeing you from a safe distance in September. And um, I suppose you're really looking forward to getting back in the office and um, we'll be seeing you there. Thanks ever so much. Absolutely. Thank you. Have a good one. Cool. Thank you very much. And thanks for watching this Raw News special. Across campus, online and on 12.51am. This, this, this is your student radio station.